Welcome to this introduction to the analysis of temporal elements in music. This system of analysis was first begun in my dissertation in 1996. It is a cognitive-based system founded upon the mind's psychological reaction to sonic events. Because it is based upon well-established principles of how the mind reacts to sound in general, it is independent of limitations of pitch, meter, or even musical notation. It is not contextual, conceptual, or linguistically oriented, but rather provides a foundational means of analyzing and understanding types of music and sound art that are not addressed in other existing theories. The seminal works of J. Dowling and Dane Harwood define much of how the mind reacts to sound. There is a chemical or physiological reaction in the brain to new events, which we call excitation, the mind then projects forward in time an expectation of what is to come. Consistent or expected events generate less excitation in the brain than do new events. Since consistent events generate less of a response than new events, they are perceived as more stable and form what we often in music call background material. New or inconsistent events elicit stronger responses and they cause a shift of focus in the mind to what we call foreground material. Changes and transformations to sound cause the mind to reorder the priority or focus to foreground events while processing the more consistent background material at a more subconscious level. The psychological present is a brief cognitive buffer, approximately one half to three seconds in length depending on the context, that allows our minds to group multiple events into single perceptual units. This is the basis of how we understand words. For example, when I say the word now, you probably knew the exact moment in time to which I was referring. But in reality, that word now lasted not a single moment, but consisted of the sounds n -a -w that occurred over the span of almost one half of a second. However, the function of the psychological present in your mind caused you most likely to conceive of it as a single event and moment. When sound events extend beyond the psychological present, they are perceived as either A, a new event, or B, the continuation of the same event, as in the following example. Single events that continue beyond the psychological present unchanged are called sustaining elements. This can be in the form of a sound, silence, or a texture via the process of fusion. Fusion is where there are more than 10 to 12 events occurring per second. As this happens, the mind begins to lump together sounds and process them more as a single unit. Examples of this are granulated sound and white noise. In the following example, the notes will increase in speed through rates of 4, 8, 12, 18, 24, and finally 32 notes per second. Note how you begin to hear them at first as individual notes, then as subdivided groupings, and finally as a single texture. Another factor that causes our mind to group sounds together is that of repetition. Since repetition allows the mind to more accurately project into the future an expectation of each successive iteration, these are also very stable elements. The strongest form of repetition is an exact repetition. However, highly similar repetitions, such as my repetition of the same word, 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 although not 100% the same each time, are so similar that the mind processes them as repeating in a like manner, though it be it of slightly weaker form. 
Events that are longer than the psychological present are heard as long repeated elements. Since they are at first perceived as non-repeating elements and only after two or three repetitions are finally perceived as repeating, these are far weaker forms of our repeating element. The other factor that facilitates the mind's ability to project forward in time the occurrence of sonic events is that of alignment to a common reoccurring interval of time, which we in music refer to as a pulse. When sonic events align themselves to this reoccurring interval of time, be it a beat or subdivision of a beat, even if they are different sounds, they elicit less of a response than new, unaligned, unexpected events in the brain. Finally, auditory streaming is a principle that causes sounds of similar timbres or tone color or in a similar pitch register to be more easily heard as a group. This principle is very helpful when attempting to isolate various sonic elements for analysis. So, let us define the following terms for use in this system of analysis. An event is a single sound, silence, or series of sounds occurring within the psychological present, which is about one half to two seconds. An element is an event or series of events extending beyond the psychological present. A sustained element is defined as a single sound, silence, or texture extending beyond the psychological present. Repeating elements are multiple sonic events that are similar enough to allow the mind to recognize and group them together into a consistent identity. These can be identical, similar, or long repeated events. And finally, aligned elements are multiple events coordinated to a common reoccurring interval of time or pulse. This leads to the following combinations of these factors forming five basic temporal elements. Sustained elements, since they are single events, are not affected by the factors of alignment or repetition. The other four elements are results of the possible combinations aligned repeating, non-aligned repeating, aligned non-repeating, and the least stable non-aligned non-repeating. Elements in the upper left side are the most stable, progressing to less stable as one moves down and to the right on the chart. Examples of sustaining temporal elements are fermatas and pedal point figures in traditional music, which often use their stable nature to help establish the beginning and ends of works. Aligned repeating elements are often used in traditional music as accompanimental material, such as Alberti bass or arpeggiated accompanimental figures. The stability of these figures allows them to support, but not distract from, melodic foreground material. Non-aligned repeating elements are not found as often in traditional metered music, but are a frequent and common element of most contemporary works. Aleatoric repeated gestures in the music of Ludoslavsky and Druckmann, free repeated speech, or tape loops are just some examples of how modern composers have used these moderately stable elements. Aligned non-repeating elements form the basis for most melodies in traditional music. The factor of alignment gives the listener a sense of predictability, but the non-repeating nature keeps it from becoming background material. Finally, non-aligned, non-repeating elements are the least predictable, and in addition to being found in our everyday world around us, are used in music during free non-metered chants, or some cadenzas, and in many contemporary acousmatic works. Although this table shows our five elements in nicely defined boxes, in reality, there are not strict borders between them. There are many forms of hybrid elements, which contain traits of two or more types of elements that exist in between. In fact, so many that it may be helpful to think of this as more of a continuum over which there can be elements that remain in a single state or may transform from one form to another thereby changing their stability and priority in our minds. This is one of the factors that makes music such a wonderful and interesting art form. Examples of these transformations include tempo reduction, which as sounds become longer and longer, can turn any other element into a sustaining element. Gradual increase in similarity of materials, transforming non-repeating into repeating elements. 
the reverse process where gradual variation disrupts repetition and gradual modulation of a sustained sound into another form, as in the following example where a sustained element transforms into an aligned repeating element. When different temporal elements are used in sequence, we call this relationship juxtaposed. This can be used effectively to create a sense of contrast and is often used to help define formal sections within a work. When temporal elements occur simultaneously, their degree of contrast will affect how they are heard and perceived. In the case of contrasting elements, this separation is more obvious but when similar timbres and registers are used in both elements, there will be a brief moment of disorientation during the psychological present when the mind attempts to understand what is happening. The following example demonstrates this and will also give you an example of about how long your psychological present is. See how long it takes for you to recognize the two elements in this example. come to points of temporal convergence at regular intervals of time, they form a phased relationship that helps build stability. When these points of convergence occur within the psychological present, they often result in a fusion into beats and subdivisions, which is the basis for our traditional concept of meter in music. As the length extends beyond the psychological present, this relationship weakens as the time between these points of convergence increases. There is an active focus time of about two to three times the psychological present during which the mind is seeking to ascertain if there will be something new or not. The longer time passes without a new or changing event, the more the chemical response in the brain dissipates and the lower the excitation level. This has a direct effect on pacing in a work. Entrances of new or changing events occurring less than the average active focus time of about six seconds lead to a buildup of response in the brain and a sense of increased excitation or what we often refer to in music as forward motion. As these new events or changes approach six seconds apart, they lead to a sense of a more consistent or even motion and as they expand beyond the six second mark, there's a sense of decreased forward motion or relaxation of the pace. This can be used to help define cadences in works that are in a non-harmonic or even non-pitched based medium. Other factors that help define cadences and conclusion in compositions are periods of stability followed by a brief moment of instability then a closing gesture. Greater relationship of this closing gesture to the preceding materials used in the work will generally create a stronger sense of finality or conclusion to a passage. Upward gestures, where the pitch or frequency content ascends, generally lead to more of a sense of openness and are less conclusive, while downward gestures are generally heard as being more conclusive. Examples of how this system of temporal analysis can be applied to works that might otherwise be thought difficult to analyze are, or soon will become, available on this site. You can either search this site for the following titles, or view them, and others as they become available, on my website at www.robertfrankmusic.com and click on the Temporal Elements link. I hope that you find this to be a useful tool in your listening, understanding, and creation of new works, and welcome any comments or feedback you may have. Thank you.